Good afternoon, happy Monday folks, and welcome back to another episode of Adam's Eats. Hope you're well, hope you had a good weekend. Right, fish and chips. It's our national dish, right? We're known for it. And I don't care what anyone says, right? I've heard people say, no, our national dish is tikka masala or it's bolognese. It's not, all right? It's fish and chips. We do it really well. All right, yeah, we can do it really rubbish as well, because trust me, I've had some awful fish and chips in my life. Don't you worry about that. But done properly, it's really, really delicious. Another little known fact that you may not know is we adapted this recipe from Portuguese and Spanish Jews that came over to this country in the 16th and 17th century uh, with a dish called pescado frito, uh, which is kind of fish fried in breadcrumbs and was normally eaten on a Friday, much like we do now. Uh, and we've just adapted it, made it our own, and it's kind of our national dish now. Now, what's the secret to good fish and chips? The first thing is good fresh fish. Don't buy frozen because, right, some nefarious chip shops, they use frozen fish and it's just not half as good, right? You end up with a milky, mushy kind of mess, right? It's gotta be firm, white, fresh fish. Now I'm using haddock, but you can use cod, pollock, or any other sustainable white fish. Now with the chips, I'm gonna bake them in the oven rather than deep fry them because they're a little bit lighter, a little bit healthier, and actually they come out really, really good. And for the peas, right, traditionally you would have mushy peas with your fish and chips, but oh, I don't really like mushy peas, right? They're made with those fat, horrible, grey, marrow-fat peas, and mm, nah, don't like those at all. So I'm gonna make mine with uh, frozen peas, and I'm gonna cook them in a little bit of water, and then at the end I'm gonna melt some butter through, some fresh herbs, I'm gonna use mint, and I've got some dill left over from the recipe the other day, so I'm gonna use that as well. Mix that all together, salt, pepper, and then I'm just gonna crush them lightly with a fork, and that's what we're gonna have with it. Right, let's get on with it then. Press that pause button, make a list of those ingredients, get your noggin down here, and I'll show you how to do it. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our chips. Now, you want about two large potatoes per person. Uh, this recipe is for two, but I'm only using three potatoes because these are flipping massive. <laughs> Look at the size of those. Um, so the first thing we need to do is peel them. And then once peeled, you want to chop them into nice, thick chips, all right? We're not making French fries, we're making proper British chips, so they need to be nice and chunky. So just slice them into thick wedges to start with, and into nice, thick chips. That's about the size you're looking for. A nice, proper British chip that's substantial. Get that in a bowl, and then just repeat that with the rest of your spuds. And then take your chips over to the sink, and then just fill the bowl with cold water. Give them a bit of a rinse. This just takes off any excess starch, because we don't want that on our chips. Right, so I've rinsed my chips, I've added them to a pan, put in some fresh water and a pinch of salt to get the gas on, and then bring that water to a boil, then turn it down to a simmer, and then gently cook these for about five minutes, just until the outside edges of the chips are cooked, um, and then we'll drain them off, and then they're ready for the oven then. Right, so these chips have had about five minutes, and I think they're at the point where they're ready. Uh, yep, I can see that they're just cooked on the outside edge, but still raw in the middle, so we'll get these off and drained. Right, so let's get these drained through a colander. Now, actually, one of my subscribers mentioned that they got this exact same colander. Small world, I suppose. Well, small world in the sense of colanders. Uh, but they do actually have a really good channel. It's called Two Takes. So I'll leave a link to their channel just at the end. So go check them out. Uh, they do film reviews and stuff like that, and they're really, really cool. There's some really good editing, and their banner is absolutely magnificent. It's a hand-drawn like cartoon, it's brilliant. So go and check them out, look at some of their videos, and tell them I sent you. Right, so once you've drained your chips, you want to preheat your oven to gas mark six, and then taking your chips, you just want to put them onto a grease-proof lined baking tray. Try and get them onto one layer if you can. Or, you know, use two trays if you want. Now, they're gonna be quite delicate, so just be careful not to break them up, and then just drizzle with a little bit of oil. I'm just using sunflower oil here and season with some pepper, good pinch of salt, and they want to go into the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes until they're nice and crisp and golden brown. Check halfway through, give them a good old turn, and then just pop them back in until they're finished. So whilst the chips are cooking, we're gonna get on and make the batter for our fish. Got 300 grams of plain flour here. Let's get that into a bowl. Okay, and then we're gonna start adding beer. I'm using just a nice Czech lager here. I'm putting in about 500 ml here. And then you wanna mix that through until it's about the consistency of double cream. Don't worry about getting it super smooth. Um, if there's a few lumps, that's fine, because they'll just go nice and crispy. That's the kind of consistency you're looking for. It's almost like double cream. And you wanna add some pepper, a good pinch of salt, and that's your batter done. We'll pop it in the fridge until we need it. Right, our chips are almost ready. They've probably got about 10, maybe 15 minutes left. So I'm gonna turn my gas on to heat this oil up to temperature. Now, if you're using a deep fat fry, you're gonna to wanna to get it to a temperature of about 180, 190 degrees centigrade. I've got one of those, so I'm using a pan full of oil. 
so I'm just gonna have to kind of eyeball it, but you could also use a probe as well. Right, so whilst the oil is getting nice and hot, I'm just gonna sprinkle our fish fillets with a little bit of flour. This just helps the batter stick better, go to each side, get it everywhere, why not? And then just plunk that straight into your batter mix. There's more batter here than what you probably need, but better to have more than not enough. Now I think the oil is about up to temperature. I'm just gonna test it with a little bit of bread. Yeah, it's fizzing, that means it's ready. And then you just wanna drop in your fish, nice and gently, and then fry the fish for about five to eight minutes until that batter is nice and golden brown. Right, so it's been about five minutes now and my fish is done. It's lovely and golden brown all over. So I'm just gonna take them out and pop them onto a plate lined with kitchen paper just to get rid of that excess oil. And they'll sit to one side while we get on and make our peas. So all you need to do is add your frozen peas to a pan and then just cover with just enough water so they just cover the peas. Turn the gas on, bring it to a boil and then simmer for about two minutes. Right, so after a couple of minutes, I just drain them off and now I'm going to add a nice generous knob of butter and then some chopped mint and dill, about a teaspoon of each. Or if you're just using mint, use a couple of teaspoons. Uh, a little bit of pepper, and then just give that a mix until all that butter has melted. Try not to get peas all over the place. And then using a fork, you just want to squash the peas into a semi-mush, I suppose. Semi-mushy peas, I suppose they're called. And those are done now, so let's dish up. Right, so let's get on a nice piece of fish. Some of those wonderful, crisp, oven-baked chips. And then some of those lovely, crushed peas with mint and dill. And then a little bit of tartar sauce, just because it goes nice with fish and chips. And then just a sprinkling of mold and sea salt. You don't have to be this posh if you don't want to, but mold and sea salt's delicious. And there we have folks, fish and chips, Adam style. Right, here we go then, fish and chips. I can't wait. I'm gonna try one of these chips first because they look super, super good. Those are really crispy chips. Now you can use a deep fat fry if you want. You know, it's absolutely fine. But just cooking them in the oven makes them a little bit healthier. And they're just as crisp and delicious. Let's try some of those peas. Delicious, fresh, buttery. If you like just normal, traditional, mushy peas, then go right ahead and have those, but I don't like them. And then for the star of the show, that fish. You know, sometimes when you go to a fish and chip shop, you get home and the batter is just all soggy by the time you get it on your plate. This is nothing like that. It is light, it is crisp, and that fish is just so moist. Well, there we are, folks. That is my homemade fish and chips with semi-mushy peas. I can't be long because I can see the battery light flashing on my camera. It's gonna cut off any minute now. Um, so thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys next time for more tasty fun and frolics. Thanks again for watching and bye for now.